for this card I'm going to make something for uh, for the gentleman um, something for those Cricut lovers out there using the bold over stamp set and the coordinating die set as well and also using the village green scenery paper pad now within this we have lots of different variations we have the pale detail and then we have the really vivid colors as well and these are perfect these pale ones they're a bit like a watermark for putting your brighter colors over the top of and really making them stand out so I've chosen to go with the background that's a slightly more muted one um, and this way my stamped images will really show up on top so I've taken one of these and I've already cut it to size so that it will fit my card base so my card is just a tent fold card there that I've made myself and I will stick that over the top in a little while when I start putting everything together. So for the additional pieces, I'm going to be stamping these and colouring them in. Now what I love about Daisy May stamps is that they are so easy to peel off the backing paper and they are really, really detailed. I love that Claire hand draws everything, so they've got beautiful detail inside of them. I'm just using a VersaFine ink pad here and my clear acrylic block and I'm going to stamp onto some smooth white cardstock, but making sure around the edge I leave enough of a border to die cut because when we do die cut this with that coordinating die we are going to have a slight edge left around it so you don't want to stamp right up to the edge of your paper. I'm going to repeat this stamping for the other two images in the set. I'll just pop that in the corner there and I'll cut that out by hand in a little while. So just popping my stamps away. Before I die cut these images, I'm going to colour them in. Now, I like to use alcohol inks, and there's lots of different ones on the market. Um, one of my favourites are Chameleon, but there's loads you can choose from. There's no right or wrong with the brands. So I'm going to use the Chameleons to just tone down the ink and add some shading in, particularly to the Cricut balls that we have here, because these would be rounded, and we want to give them that sphere look. So starting with this pen in its palest form in an area just there and working round in circles and giving it darker shades lower down. Now you can do this with pencils, you could do this with um, watercolour paints or any paints you have at home. Um, you could do this with other alcohol pens that have um, different shades within a set as well so there's lots of different options if you don't have these particular pens just add a darker line over the top as well so that would be the shadow going over the other side now for the rest of these images I'm actually not going to um, do too much coloring because really the bat and the stumps would be brown and then the the Cricut attire here would all mostly be white or cream so I'm just going to add a few little highlights and shadows more than anything so for example I'm going to take a creamy colour and just add into the I think these are garbs here I'm not very good with my Cricut and just add, add a little bit of this creamy colour where the shadows would be just to give the effect of shading and you can tell where the shading needs to go because um, Claire when she designs these she does add in little details so you can see where the shading needs to go so like little hatch lines but you can also guess for yourself as well anything that's downwards so the, the light from above wouldn't be getting on it um, that's where you'd want to put your shading. Once you've coloured your entire images in you'll need to take your outline dies and just cut these images out. They're very simple dies, so really easy to line up and place over the image, as you can see. Um, I would just take them down with the low tack tape and run those through my die cutting machine. So here are my pieces that I have fully coloured in there, and then I've die cut them. And as you can see, there is a very slight white border around the edge, but I really like this effect. I think that adds to almost a cartoon-like style there. So I've got those three pieces and I've got my happy retirement that I've just cut out into a rectangle shape. Now I'm going to start matting and layering 
my background paper but before I do that I want to add some ink so I've got some blues here and I want to bring in a blue ink to go around the edge to tie everything together this is quite a dark sort of grey blue um, but the darker shade will not only tie in with the darker blues that we have on those stamped images but it will also help lift this layer up so whether we glue this down flat or whether we add foam tape which is what I'm going to do you're going to still get that drop shadow look and give it dimension so you can really see the layers there alternatively if you are not so keen on inking you could uh, take a piece of darker cardstock similar to the blue here and you could mat that slightly larger before putting it onto your card base I'm just going to do the same with the excess that's on my sponge just around the edge of this happy retirement sentiment here there so that just finishes the edges off so to put this onto my card base I'm going to use a foam tape now I've got one from craft stash it's a wide foam tape here and I'm just going to snip this in three sections one at the top one at the bottom and then one through the center as well you could go all the way around the edge if you wanted to it's entirely your preference just making sure that my card is the right way up I'm going to stick this down in the center of my card base making sure the border all the way around the edge is even so you can see really see there uh, where that inked border makes that stand out a little bit more it sort of gives it a bit of a vignette there and then I could place these just on here as they are but they almost sort of fade into the background so what I've done is I've taken my outline dies here and I have recut the same shapes without any stamping just from some grey cardstock as you can see so they look like funny blobs at the moment but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a wet glue and I'm going to glue my stamped images over the grey image or the grey die cuts with a very slight border so just leaving a slight drop shadow to the bottom and to the right of each of the images and this will help them stand out a little bit more on the card so now my images when I place them onto the card there they do stand out just a little bit more that drop shadow has given them a little bit of a wow factor so it looks as if they're jumping out or they're lifted off the card and it's entirely up to you at this stage whether you decide you want to actually raise those up even further with some foam pads or whether you're happy with them like this if you are popping them in the post I'd suggest just pop them flat on the page like this because you've got that drop shadow they already look like there's dimension there so I'm going to use some foam tape because I'm not worried about popping this in the post I'm going to give it by hand so I'm just going to apply foam tape across the back of each one so there I've just added my um, my stamped images onto the card there and they already do look as if they're jumping off because of that drop shadow I absolutely love those now it doesn't have to be that the recipient loves to play cricket it may just be that they like to watch it instead so that would be absolutely perfect 